You may have a loved one who suffers from addiction, and you may have tried other methods, but the Robert Alexander Center for Recovery may be your answer. I've met a lot of folks on this show, and all of their staff, and I've had a lot of them on, are very genuine, very compassionate, and they have state-of-the-art methods to get where you need to be. With me now, I've been asking you to come on, as James Sweezy. He is the co-founder and also the marketing director of the Robert Alexander Center. Welcome to the show, James. Thank, Thank you. you for coming on. I am, uh, the first thing I said to you when, I, when we met was I said, congratulations, because I've met a lot of your employees, and not only are they qualified, they are genuinely empathetic and compassionate. Talk about the importance of that, James. It's extremely important, and you know, I always say, anybody can build a building. Anybody can put a structure up. That's easy. It's always the people that make Robert Alexander Center what it is, all the way from the clinical team, the nurses, the behavioral health techs, right? The people that greet you when you come in the door. You might be the first person that this guy or girl has ever seen in the recovery community. So your attitude and how you portray yourself and how you treat that person makes a big deal right there in that moment. Um, it, it just can be monumental for somebody to walk in and see a smiling face, especially someone that's knowledgeable and passionate about what they do. It's a really big deal for us, so, and our so staff's amazing. You, you vet your employees, obviously, but there's also a lot of training involved as well, right, James? There is. There's uh, our clinical director, uh, Dr. Carson Economy McCall, is a, a PhD. Um, our staff is uh, master level clinicians, therapists. We have 24 hour nursing. We have uh, our our nursing director, Amy Spain, runs the whole thing. There's constant training and ongoing uh, training of our staff. You said something to me, James, that really, when you talked about every experience that you have with employees at Robert Alexander could mean the difference. I agree with you because I think there's a lot of addicts, and if you've ever known one, uh, that are looking for a way out. They're looking for any negative they can grasp and hold on to and say, okay, I'm, this isn't for me. You are very aware of that. So talk about the importance of every experience, whether it be one-on-one -on -one therapy, group therapy, like you said, even, even meeting the receptionist as you walk in the door, right? Right. Unfortunately, people are, including myself, when I was in, uh, when I was in my addiction and my alcoholism, are looking for any negative to get out of it. And the way that works, uh, particularly with our family therapist, right, we have to get the loved ones on board, whether it's mom, dad, brother, sister, we have to get everyone on the same page because um, I will look for anything to say, well, I, I don't like the way that person looked at me. I don't like the food here. I don't like the bed they have me in. Even to the point of lying and calling mom and dad and say, well, somebody offered me drugs while I was in that other center over there and lying and trying to trick the family into coming back in. So we use this holistic approach. We have a theater in the building. We have uh, a new fitness center and wellness center that we just added on. Uh, hydrotherapy, copper tubs, massage therapists. Mm -hmm. We do everything we can to take this holistic approach and try to get, uh, occupy their minds as much as possible. But then that's where, the, again, the staff really comes in, all the way from the behavioral health techs that are working the floor every day, all the way up to the clinical director, very well trained in this space. And to notice this stuff when it's happening, and it all really is brought together by the family therapist, who is then communicating with mom, dad, family members, whatever that looks like, to tell them, hey, you're probably gonna get a call in 20 minutes from your loved one that says, hey, this is wrong, get me out of here now. But here's what's really happening. So the oh. family being involved with that is big. We, we see it all the time, John. Uh, somebody could come in, now think about this. They could come in and say, let's say you get your loved one to go to treatment, and they're gonna make a 60-day commitment to go to treatment. They come in about two weeks later after the medical taper's done, they're on their feet, they're feeling better. They call a loved one and say, hey, I think I'm done. I don't need all of this. I don't need to do this process. I feel fine now and I just promise I'll never drink or use again. And they call a loved one and say, just come and get me. And sometimes the loved one does. They drive up and pick them up two weeks into a, let's say a 60 day stay, right? So I want you to think about this. The first act of your new sobriety was to break a commitment to yourself and to your family. Oh. Made a 60 day commitment, but now after two weeks, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna do it my way again. So the first act of your new life is to break a commitment. And you can't tell me that you're making a commitment to stay clean and sober for the rest of your life. What, 50, 60 years? But you can't hold a 60 day commitment to yourself and your family. Wow, James, that, wow, that, that to me is, is, is a life changing statement. I understand that, but also the commitment, you mentioned family. It's not only your staff, 
and the person who is admitted, it's also the family has to make that commitment to, hey, we're in this together, right? A hundred percent. And I'll, I'll, you know, I always say uh, addiction is the only disease that'll make the person sitting next to you sick, right? And what I mean by that is people don't mean to do this. My mother didn't mean to do this, right? But I, I'm a father now. I have two little girls and I'm a fixer, right? Uh, your father, they come mm. to you. You want to fix it. This is yeah. broken. My computer doesn't work. This doesn't work. Sew this together for me. Fix that, right? And what do we do? We're trained over all this time to fix it. I'm going to fix this for you. Well, after 18, 20 years, whatever that looks like, of being the fixer to your family, we start to get into some adult problems. Those things come into, hey, I'm out of groceries. I need someone to pay my cell phone bill. I need someone to pay my rent. And sometimes people remain the fixer to an adult with adult problems. And you have to work with a family therapist and sit the fixer down for a minute and let them learn how to fix their self. Yeah, and I hate to use the word tough love because it's not tough love, it's just the right, it's the answer. So this, this abstainee program that you have, tell me about that. Oh, so we're talking about the abstinence program, right? Yeah, abstinence. So, um, we, we have a medical detox, right? We have 24 hour nurses, there's an RN on every shift. And that's a lot of the questions we get is, who is my loved one gonna be around? Where are they sleeping? What are they, you know, where are they going to group? What's the kitchen look like? Anybody's welcome to come to call us, schedule with me and take a tour. But um, the abstinence program, beyond the medical taper, when you come in our medical staff, we have an MD, we have a psychiatrist, again, the RN on every shift. If someone's using, let's say, heroin or alcohol, they will be given a narcotic medication for a few days to take to wean them down. Each day, the dose will be lowered. Then we're gonna switch to a non-narcotic option to take the place of that and work for a few days, right? And safely, medically walk them off of whatever they're using. Once you have done that at any of our centers and Robert Alexander Center, once you have done that, the conversation about taking narcotics is over. This is not an ongoing maintenance program where we're going to have you come into the building right. once a week or once a day or whatever it is and taking narcotics or getting a bottle of narcotics and carrying it back to your house or your neighborhood. We wake up with oxygen, prayer, and breakfast. That's how we start our day. Let's go. So there's, it's an abstinence-based program. It's moved Absolutely. forward. Let's get better. Okay. That's right. Uh, real quickly, because we're in our final seconds here, but true or false? I think a lot of folks watch this and maybe even uh, someone who's uh, been through a program before. Detox is a painful process. Yes or no? False. False. It right. is false. Yeah, because of everything I just described to you, right, with our fantastic nursing staff, all the way, I keep saying all the way down to the behavioral health technician that's in recovery themselves. They've been where you are. They know how to get out. But that medical process that I'm talking about now of giving you medication and tapering you down, it is not a painful process, but it can be an emotional process. And look, I get it. For a grown man or a grown woman to say, okay, I have to leave my kids my job and my wife for the next 30 to 60 days, that takes a little humility, right? Mm -hmm. It can be an emotional process, but that's what you said it in the beginning. Our people are amazing, all the way to the family therapist that's gonna be calling mom and dad, sister, whoever that looks like. Our staff will walk your entire family through that process. Boy, I, I feel your passion, James, and I don't blame you because you're changing lives. You're changing lives for the better, living them live an abundant life that they thought they would never live. So congratulations Thank to you, you, to your staff. Again, the Robert Alexander Center. Give them a call today if you need heck, expert help. If you need people who genuinely care, then you've got it at the RAC. That is the Robert Alexander Center for Recovery. All right, we'll take